In today's video, you'll learn about 1. Incoterms, EXW, FOB, CIF, DDP, and DDU. 2. Shipping methods using ocean freight, air freight, and courier service. 3. Shipping time from China to the U.S. And 4. Shipping cost, the factors determining the cost of freight forwarding services, as these are all part of the processes of shipping from China to the U.S. Let's start with Incoterms. Incoterms are a set of rules that define the roles and the respective accountabilities and responsibilities between the sellers and the buyers. These rules are used primarily by people who are involved in the shipping process from China to the United States. Here are some of the most common INCO terms used not only by international traders, but anyone who is involved in the process. EXW, which means X-Works. This is a type of shipping which makes the buyer the main responsible for arranging every step of the goods shipment from China to the United States. The only part of the seller here is to secure an export license and certificate of origin. However, this is rarely used alone since it's usually combined with the other shipping types to arrive at a fair agreement. FOB, or free on board, the most common mode of arrangement in shipping since this type is deemed to be fair not only to the buyer, but also to the seller. How does this work? Basically, the supplier is the one in charge of the liabilities and responsibilities of the shipment until it leaves the dock to be shipped from China to the US, also known as an FOB shipping point and the buyer takes the liabilities and responsibilities of the shipment when it reached the dock of destination. However, take note that this type of agreement only applies to sea freight method of shipment. CIF. On the other hand, there's also CIF, or cost, insurance, and freight, which is a type of agreement that places the burden of the shipment to the seller. The seller practically covers all the needed things and cost in the overall shipment process, from the country of origin to the receiving company, including the insurance of the goods. Both the seller and the buyer should agree if the shipment should arrive at the point of destination or go straight to the final address of delivery. If the buyer wants to pick it at the destination point, then he or she should shoulder the necessary or additional costs when it arrives, if there are any. This type of agreement, though, is much more expensive since most suppliers add a premium amount to pay for their efforts. DDU, or Delivery Duty Unpaid on the other hand, is a type of agreement wherein the seller takes charge of all the necessary agreements of the shipment, including the import customs fee. The only responsibilities left for the buyer are the unloading of the shipment and import clearance, if it wasn't included in the agreement. Most of the time, the seller adds every additional expense to the total shipping cost, and then presents a landing cost, the cumulative quotation. DDP, in delivery duty paid, is like DDU, but with all the fees needed like import customs fees and the unloading of goods. In our second point, we'll be tackling the different shipment methods when shipping goods from China to the U.S. Primarily, there are three main methods in shipping from China to the U.S. Sea freight, air freight, and courier service. Sea freight, also known as ocean freight, is the most common shipping method, especially when high volumes of goods are being exported and imported. This means getting goods, commodities, cargo, etc., physically transported from one place to another by sea. One of the oldest in the field of trade and commerce and considered the lifeblood of the world's economy. Why do we use sea freight and transportation and shipping from China to the US? One, this method of shipping is the preferred transporting cargo of huge volumes. Any kind of goods or cargoes can be transported via sea freight shipping. For example, heavy types of equipment like trucks, cranes, and project cargo. Two, sea freight is also beneficial when the time is not a factor which is typical on large volumes of shipment. Paying lower costs at high volumes of shipping is one of the main reasons why people choose this method in transporting goods from one country to another. Air freight. A few decades ago, Traders and shippers rarely used this method in shipping due to the restraints in safety and capacity. But not anymore. Air freight is now widely used globally. As a matter of fact, 52 million metric tons of goods were transported in 2016 alone. 
Basically, air freight shipping is the method of transporting goods and products through a chartered or commercial plane. This is possible in almost everywhere in the world, as long as there is a route or destination where an airplane can land and fly. Reasons why we use this method in shipping? One, this is great for cargoes that require fast shipping time. Air freight reaches the destination place before an ocean freight does. Traders around the world see air freight as a perfect method for low volume cargoes and city to city shipments because this will reduce the time of shipping. Two, when shipping through the air, lower costs in inventory and the possibility of capturing market share faster are also some of the main advantages of using this method. Three, other benefits may also include, but are not limited to, minimal handling, decreased time in queuing upon arrival, and most importantly, better security. Courier service. This is a type of shipping method provided by private courier companies like FedEx, DHL, and such. These companies specialize in transporting goods anywhere in the world in the fastest time possible. If you're looking for a method with the shortest shipping time, this is for you. How does this work? These companies have robust networks which make shipping at a fast pace possible. Customers of couriers can track the delivery of the package real-time. Normally, these companies offer door-to-door -door deliveries. The downside, though, is that it is very expensive that oftentimes traders can hardly gain profit in this type of shipment method. Next in line is the shipping time from China to the U.S. of A. There are a couple of variables that traders and freight forwarders consider when it comes to shipping from China to the United States. However, all of them are influenced by how much you can bring to the table. A low-cost shipping methodology will guarantee a slower shipping process, but a little nudge in the shipment costing can expedite the process. Your choice. Air freight shipping from China to the USA East Coast may take four to five business days. However, shipping from China to the USA West Coast can take from two to three days. Ocean freight is by far the cheapest and slowest method of shipping. The shipping time may take from 30 to 40 days on average for door-to-door -door shipments. Traders should remember that sea freight type of shipments need additional preparation when it comes to documents in both countries. Courier shipping from China to the USA depends on the private courier company. Some of the average shipping time from China to the US includes, for DHL, it takes around three and a half days, EMS, or 15.7 days, FedEx, 4.6 days, UPS, for five days. Premium services, on the other hand, guarantee two to five business days, which is the fastest way to get your goods, parcel, or anything delivered from China to the United States. And lastly, the shipping cost from China to US. Let's face it, many traders tend to overlook one of the most common factors in shipping, the cost. Importers should understand that there are a lot of factors that make shipping from China more complicated. Shipping cost from China to the US is about 2,000 to 2,500 to the West Coast for a 20 GP container. It costs 3,000 to 3,500 from China to the East Coast. That's practically the port-to-port -port shipping cost. Air shipment with a private courier is about 5.5 to 7.5 per kilogram, with FedEx, for example, and 7.5 to 9.5 dollars per kilogram when you go with DHL, which I think is faster and more reliable. Let's now explore the cost structure in terms of both ocean freight and air freight. Ocean freight. In shipping cargo from China to the US using sea freight shipping, the type of cargo, weight, distance, and the shipment time affects the cost of the shipment. The cargo. You should know what you are shipping, legally. Cargos are classified according to an international set of rules. The shipping rates may change rapidly depending on the season and the shipping vessels available. That is why you need to make sure of the information that involves your cargo to make the shipment smooth. Shipment weight and size. All cargoes that are transported via this type of shipping method are measured according to their volume in cubic meters. Every cubic meter has its own charge. Coordinate with a freight forwarder and let them know the exact weight of your cargo for them to check if there are other charges that you need to pay. Shipment time. 
This factor needs preparation ahead of time. Haggling over the rate of the spot can be frustrating, since this changes quickly depending on the space available in the vessel. The best way to do it is to ask a freight forwarder to check the latest prices and compare them. Make a reservation or payment 30 days before the scheduled departure. Normally, freight prices do not change for about a month. However, there may also be times where they change after a week or even a few days after. Location and destination. It's important to know where the cargo departs and where it will arrive. There are three different types of terms traders use in terms of destination. Port to port, door to door, and port to door. Port to port is a transportation agreement wherein the cargo is delivered from port of origin to the port of destination. The supplier is the one in charge for processing and paying all the necessary documents for it to be transported to the U.S., and the buyer is the one who will process the clearances and documents needed to be able to get the shipment when it arrives in the USA. Door to door. This is the most preferred way of importers living in the U.S. All you have to do is pay the freight charges and your cargo will be sent to your preferred address. Landed cost is the total cost of a shipment that the buyer needs to pay. The formula for the landed cost is this. Landed cost equals EXW or FOB plus two-door freight plus import duties or tax plus customs clearance fees plus port handling fees. Here's the breakdown of the accountabilities and the responsibilities of landed cost. EXW or FOB should be paid by the seller or supplier. Two-door freight should be paid by the freight forwarder. Customs fees to be paid to the customs through a customs broker. Port handling fees should also be paid by the seller. Port handling fees are made by the terminal operator to pay for the workforce responsible for transferring cargo from the seller's vehicle to the stack, then to the conveyance prior to departure, and transferring cargo from the arriving conveyance to the stack, then to the buyer's vehicle upon arrival. The following make up for the landed cost in an importation transaction. Transportation to port of loading. Bill of lading. Export customs declaration. Loading port fees. Ocean freight charge. Insurance. Destination port fees. Import security filing or ISF. ISF bond. Entry bond. Import customs clearance. Customs duty or tax. Entry and messenger fees. Merchandise processing fees. Harbor maintenance fees. Duties based on goods. Transportation from the port of destination. Air freight. Although it is a known fact that shipping through air is faster than shipping through the ocean, every importer should know the costs that come with it. Air freight shipping is way more expensive than ocean shipping. Volume. Air freight couriers charge your cargo by volume or the space that it occupies. The calculation of volume is by multiplying length, width, and height. The unit should be in inches. Chargeable weight. Chargeable weight are determined by two computations, actual weight and the dimensional weight, also known as DIM. Whichever is heavier will be the actual basis of the amount that you need to pay. This is called the billable weight. The dimensional weight is calculated this way. Dimensional weight equals length times width times height divided by 166. Whereas L is the length in inches, W is the width, and H is the height, also in inches. Air shipment is calculated this way. Packaging data to volume to DIM weight to DIM weight versus actual weight equals chargeable weight or billable weight. Here is an example on how to do it. Ship method or destination is air freight or international from China to the U.S. The actual weight is 35 pounds. The length is 40 inches. The width is 15 inches. Height, 15 inches. And cubic size calculation is 40 times 15 times 15 equal to 9,000 cubic inches. Dimensional weight calculation 
is 9,000 divided by 166, or 54.2 pounds. In this example, the cubic size, which is the volume of the package, in cubic inches is divided by 166 to determine the dimensional weight, which is 54.2 pounds. The dimensional weight of the package, 54.2 pounds, is larger than the actual weight, 35 pounds, and therefore the dimensional weight of 54.2 pounds will be used as the billable weight. The rate of FedEx is about $5.5 per kilogram to $7.5 per kilogram, or $2.5 per pound to $3.4 per pound, with lead time from 6 to 8 business days from China to US, whereas DHL charges about $7.5 per kilogram to $9.5 per kilogram, or $3.4 per pound to $4.3 per pound with a short lead time from three to five business days. For the first kilogram, there's almost a flat rate range from $30 to $100, depending on the competitiveness of your freight forwarder's price. So in this example, our total shipping cost with air is 54.2 minus 2.2 times 3.4 plus $30. The first kilogram, our first 2.2 pounds flat rate, equal to $206.8. Some of the things that you also need to consider are import tax, custom duty, and tariff. Introducing the harmonized system, also known for the terms tariff code, custom codes, import or export codes, harmonized codes. Coding system codes and harmonized commodity description are used as a universal language used in classifying products. Learning the right codes for the products you'll be importing is of utmost importance. For U.S. importers, there is what we call Harmonized Tariff Schedule of the United States, HTSUS, code that you'll be needing to calculate the import tax and custom duty. Their website is ustr.gov slash callout slash U.S. hyphen harmonized hyphen tariff hyphen schedule hyphen HTS. Here's an example of a product we've used the HTS code tool on. Every detail written above should be listed on the commercial invoice correctly. Any error in the entries, no matter how big or small, could be disastrous. Aside from delays in the customs procedures, it may also incur penalties that could hit on your shipping from China to U.S. cost. Conclusion Every detail of the import and export business can affect the decision and roads to take, and every path has its own benefits and pitfalls. The more knowledge you as an importer can gain, the easier the decisions to be made will be. You need to take these decisions seriously, since they play a vital role in the success of every supply and chain shipping transaction.